Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shikha and I welcome you to my channel. I'm so grateful as always that you guys are listening, subscribing and commenting on my channel. I really appreciate the support. In this video, I want to speak to you guys about highly sensitive people and how being part of that tribe, being an empath, being extremely sensitive to everything that's going on around you is sometimes a very difficult way to live in the world because you can't ignore everything that's going on around you. You'd like to ignore it, obviously, because that's the easiest way to live on this planet. There's a lot of shit going on on the planet that you're like, well, if I could just be an ostrich, if I could just hide you know, in the corner, if I could just bury my head in the sand, everything would be all right. I could just pretend like nothing was going on. Unfortunately, being a high, highly sensitive person or, as an, or an HSP or an empath or an INFJ, you just can't do that. You, it's just impossible for you, once you know something, once you know that something's wrong, for you to ignore it. That thing is going to bug you until the end of time. It's going to peck at your head or at your heart or your soul, constantly reminding yourself, reminding you that you are missing something or you should be doing something or there's something going on that you need to pay attention to, right? And so it's extremely hard to ignore it, unfortunately, right? One of the examples I wanted to tell you guys about is about a Thai person that I met a few days ago. She's a dentist and she just graduated and she's just started working uh, perhaps a year ago, maybe. And so she worked with the, government, with the government for a while, made really good money, realized that it was not the way she wanted to go. Too much red tape, too much bureaucracy. bureaucracy. Uh, not enough change. She wanted to be a model for change. She wanted to make change happen and she wasn't able to do that in the government. Thai government is what she worked for. A Thai hospital, like a public hospital. And then she decided, all right, I'm going to go into the private sector. Maybe it's a little bit better. And she tried it again, realized it's the same thing all over the place. And so she was at the workshop with me and it was a stress relief workshop. And she was talking about how every single day she gets up and she's just extremely stressed out by the fact that she has to work in this role, in this position where, yes, she makes a lot of money. Yes, she has a lot of status in the Thai society. You know, she is able to garner all of this admiration for her because she, she's rich, because, of the, because she has a potential to be extremely rich, and she is rich right now. But also because dentists, doctors, you know, professionals like that are given a lot of respect in the Thai culture. So she has a sort of status in the culture. You know, she's able to buy a car, she's able to buy a nice house or a nice condo and things like that. And so all of that is something that push, pushed her into this field, obviously. You know, in the beginning, she's like, all right, cool. I guess I really don't know what I want to do with my life. There's no specific goal or dream that I have. So maybe I'll just do this because it'll make me money and it'll give me status, right? Now that she's actually, because she's extremely sensitive, she's realizing that she can't do it anymore because the industry itself doesn't care about people's teeth. They just care about money, right? And it's hard for her because she's talking to us about it, you know, and all of us are Farangs on the table, except for one person. Farangs, I mean for foreigners. And you know, she's talking to us about it. She's like, you guys understand this because obviously you guys have gone through it and you understand that process a little bit more. But in the Thai culture, whenever I try to speak to my friends about this stuff, they don't get it because they're like, well, that's what the point is, right? You, you're here to make money. You're here to um, not to fix teeth or anything. And like, that's like a side effect of it. Maybe you'll do it. Maybe you won't. It's better if you don't because you'll make more money from them that way. But that's the whole point. You became a dentist to become rich. And so what is the problem here, right? And her friends, her family, her, her culture in general is not able to see her point of view, the fact that she's upset about all of this, right? And there's a lot more that she spoke about, about you know, how she didn't want to do this anymore and how she's getting so stressed out and et cetera, et cetera. But from all of that, I gathered that you know, it's a little bit harder for a sensitive person like her to live in the world. And I, I understand this for all sensitive people in general. I feel like because we are highly sensitive and we see the world in the way that we want to idealistically and we want to live in that idealistic world and we are unable to ignore the wrongs that are going on around us it's extremely hard for us to ignore them and so it, it pecks at us you know it kind of affects us all the time and it, it you know ruins basically our days we can't not think about it anything that's going on in the world around us it's 
impossible for us to ignore it, especially if we are aware of it, right? And that's one of the reasons why it's recommended nowadays to avoid watching the news as much as possible if you're a highly sensitive person because it just is gonna, it, it's just going to deteriorate your mental status or mental health so badly that you won't be able to function normally in this world anymore. And I know that because it happened to me many times before. Right? So the problem all of obviously all of, in all of this is that we're living in a world filled with not insensitive people, but people who are able to ignore these things much easier than we are. I don't think they're necessarily insensitive. I don't think I want to use that word. That seems like a very cruel thing to say. But I think they're able to better protect themselves, perhaps, or better ignore all the things going on around them. Or perhaps they don't actually even think about it, right? They're so focused on making money and living in the world and just living their lives, busy, busy lives, that they don't think about all of these other things. Whereas for us, we spend a lot of time on our own. Uh, most highly sensitive people are also introverts. So we spend a lot of time on our own thinking about these things, right? We're thinking about all the things that matter to us, all these things that we want to change in the world, the idealistic way that we want to live in the world, the idealism, idealistic values that we have for the world. And so we're always thinking about this stuff and it causes us a lot of angst and a lot of emotionality, a lot of feelings, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, because we're so sensitive, we feel them even more so. And that's why a lot of highly sensitive people have to really protect themselves. They have to hide in their rooms as much as possible or in their caves and avoid as much as possible outside interaction with other people, other things, other animals or anything, right? And as I said, avoid the news and uh, and things like that as much as possible negative things because it just it's gonna completely kill you from the inside out if it hasn't already so and I was wa watching her you know speak about all this stuff and uh, my the Thai girl and you know one of the things she was talking about was how she wish wished there were more people around her she could talk to about this stuff you know that's why she's talking to us about it uh, for about it because she didn't she couldn't talk to anyone around them, around her specifically, right? It, it just wasn't possible for her. She couldn't do it because she didn't, they didn't understand her obviously. And also she didn't know the words to explain it to them. Not that, I, didn't, I don't think they would even understand it then. And I think that's the main conundrum for most sensitive people because they're surrounded by, most HSPs are surrounded by these other kinds of people, mostly sensors, right? And so, because we're surrounded by all of these sensors who are able to ignore these sensitive issues much easier than us, a lot of times HSPs feel extremely alone and isolated in their, in their, in their work, in their, in their homes, in their relationships, because they don't have the words to explain to other people what they're feeling. And even if they did, the other people wouldn't even understand what they're talking about. And I had this issue for myself when I was young as well. Um, when I was a child and I would try to explain to my parents, you know, what was going on within me, all the angst that I was feeling and anxiety and, uh, and the fear and doubt and all that stuff that was going on within me. You know, for example, as, as a child, I was really, I was extremely worried about the state of the of earth, of the planet. And this was maybe 25 years, 25 years ago. So I was 10 years old when I started thinking about this, eight or 10 years old when I started thinking about this, actually younger than that seven or eight, maybe six or seven. Anyways, I was young and I was thinking about all of these things about how the planet is kind of dying and we're not doing anything to save it and we should be doing more recycling and we should be using less uh, stuff and things like that. You know, I'd always be worried about that kind of thing. And I'd be talking to my parents, trying to talk to my parents about it and they didn't understand what I was talking to them about and why I was so worried about it. They're like, you know, you're just a child. Don't worry about this stuff. Or even like seeing abandoned animals on the side of the street, like kittens or puppies, that was very common. Or seeing my friends sexually assaulted by other people when I was so young, it still happened back then. Just all of this stuff and everything that was going on in the world really affected me and I was so sensitive and I would always try to talk to them about it. I'd be like, you know, I'd try to explain it to them in words I thought they would understand. You know, I'd say things like, my stomach, I'm storing all this ten no, I wouldn't exactly use these words, but similar words, you know, I feel like I'm all, always storing all my tension in my belly, so I, I, that's the reason I always get digestive issues, something like that, you know? And they'd be like, what are you talking about? That, that's nonsense, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's not the truth, just forget about it, right? And it's because they're, they did not perhaps think in that manner, you know, they didn't think about the fact that the body stores emotions. They didn't think about the fact that um, anything negative happening in our, our surroundings is going to get 
automatically stored in our bodies as anxiety or doubt or fear and so much other stuff, right? They didn't think about the planet. It wasn't their, their priority. They were busy taking care of their kids, made, making sure they were making enough money to take care of our needs. You know, they, are, they had other priorities. But for us, as a, as a, for me as a sensitive person, for us as general, as HSPs, we just can't ignore all the stuff that's going on in the world. And unfortunately, that's the problem here right now is that as the world becomes more and more chaotic and deteriorates further, I'm sure you guys have seen pictures and, and videos of what's going on in the world right now, the more and more that happens, the harder it is for an HSP to ignore it, right? And, that, and the harder it becomes to live in this world. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why the suicide rates on, the, on this planet are increasing immensely is because a lot of us are unable to see what's going on in the world right now and bear it and still be able to live be able to ignore it like a lot of people are able to just ignore the stuff that's going on no, so it's someone else's problem it's the government's problem the government's supposed to be taking care of it and yes of course they are, they are but the government won't do anything if you don't tell them to do something right um, or if you keep on electing the wrong people or it's the corporation's job to fix things well don't support the corporations that are doing the wrong things but you know these are the kind of things that people don't think about and only HSPs or certain people are actually sitting down and thinking about this stuff and that makes it very difficult to live in this world. And I understood, I understood exactly where this Thai girl was coming from because I had, I had been through that myself and I still go through that several times a day sometimes, okay? Again, I hope this makes sense to you guys. I wanted to share not only the story of the girl from Thailand, I wanted to share that obviously because I wanted to show you guys that it's not just Western countries that are afflicted by this syndrome, but also people in Thailand, you know, people in Asian countries where you might imagine that they're you know, too busy doing other things, well, they're still dealing with this shit as well. They're still worrying about the state of the world and worrying about you know, how they don't really want to just focus on money, but also on something fulfilling, something impactful, something bigger than them. If you guys have any questions about this topic or any other topics that I've done, please message me anytime. My contact information is in the description below. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.